technically force out another lane or give the extra levels to profit so you get that push timing from Archon. Not sure. Oh, Maybe top lane. This is a big wraparound crit. He's got Fissure Revival, so he's gonna stun up on Fluff and stuff. Fluff is gonna stun the TP, it will not be in time. First Blood is built by Crit. And he should be able to get out safety. Moon may be a different case, however. Being attacked by Wild Wings and Lifestealer will get the revenge kill. So you trade your next profit, which was the first blood, onto an Earthshaker with only like a 1-1-1 one, one, one so far. He doesn't really have a lot to grab. Yeah, I think this is like an offlane philosophy. It's like if you die, but you're getting XP and you're well, missing all of the... Oh, goodbye mid. You are so dead. Hello and welcome to Savage Roar as well. Yeah, what I really like that Whitebeard did there is that he knew that the mid lane understood what was going on, and so he just hooked it. And you're right though, there was almost no way that Monkey's forever was going to uh, be able to moon? get there. Moon? A little bit too much damage. Jay was able to get enough life back again. The stun from Fly is too far away. Fluff's tree is trying to get him from a fly to body block him out as Fluff and stuff's taking a little bit too much damage from the side creep wave, but Whitebeard's on the run. Dyer's He's got boost for the movement speed. Attack. He's got it on Fly, especially now he gets the, the void off and Fly one attack. Actually hitting him from Whitebeard who gets himself a kill. So he still finds his first nighttime kill. And pretty much a solo attempt there from Jay. It, was, it would have been a very greedy TP to come in from Fluff and stuff. Jo makes his way back top, but Moon is... Again, he's still finding levels. And it's really hard for the life oh, to Moon. He's got no way out of this one. No Tell's gonna use that last two. So you said he already hit level 6. With three sticky napalm charges over here on Mu, escaping out of his enchantress is practically impossible. No supports coming in to help him out either. So they just accept the fact that the enchantress is down. I think this is. This is all Moon wants to do, is put a lot of the attention on himself at the top. He's Great. still getting CS. Perfect vision. No way for monkeys to escape this one. He has no ice path level up. He actually went for. I don't want to dub with the Trixie build, but I've seen Trixie do this a hell. Uh, did Moon actually get stuck? <laughs> Okay, he's gonna Shikuchi himself out of it. He got uh, trapped in by Treants. While Enchanted finds a kill on bottom lane, don't tell on the run. And Pettis damage from Moo doing a lot of work, but Wipe is still gonna go down. Fluff is not brought in the extra support with the flame break, pushing back Moo as well as Fluff. Crit has that extra control from the totem, and that's enough to help him kill off Fluff. But Moo, he's coming back in for the kill on No Tell. But Treants help him give the extra vision, so this Enchantress is getting a lot off the field at the moment. The bottom tower is also taking considerable damage because Moo has turned the Radiant Catapult into a traitor. But, but, but like, when you get a blink dagger from crit, like there's no reason why you can't try and contest this. Yeah. Like, you know what's coming, so the blind echo here would be pretty massive. Oh, they're they all stacked up. The smoke's gonna break. Oh, actually the flame break. Why Pierce? He's on the cliff side. He starts his TP out right now. The no tail jumps in, they start the fire by the echo and they just explode through. And then monkeys will also get clipped as the hero. He's gonna ice pump nothing and also macro fire nothing. The door breath is able to reach down a little bit further, but with the fissure, Fluff and stuff can't even TP himself out this. Fly will die, but Moon is able to time up all the damage being done. It's currently a two for one trade as Moon gets away on 27 HP. Running away to safety, no tells now able to blink himself out. But a two for one trade-off, Roshan is still alive. But Miracle that was not well, he wasn't even there. He took out the tier 2 tower on the top lane, he has his relic already, and he's halfway through his Radiance recipe. And applying pressure now, 15 minutes in Dyer's to the tier 3 tower of Archon. Feels like a cardinal sin there, like, like draws one here, like, well, one of the big heroes you never want to ignore. But what are you supposed to do? You have this pre-built strategy, and you're going against the lineup that features so much uh, mobility and crowd yes. control. Well, then the only other option is you just gotta keep forcing the issue, push down towers, right? That's what I mean, but they went for the Roshan, it just took them so long. They have to kill no here. This should be pretty massive if they get away. Alright, they've got him. Mirada pick up another kill onto that Enchantress. Yeah. Live for Archon. But they can't counter push from here. The tier 2 tower's already lost, and look at Crit. He's watching them walk into the pit. And he jumps. The Echo Slam. Where'd the vision follow? He just TP now. Or maybe he can't. Not anymore. He actually gets ice passed up, so he cannot complete his TP. Alright, Crit, that was. Um, <laughs> Did he thought he did he think he had just had more damage? Or friends? I that was pretty funny. He just he kinda just went in, he's like and then he instantly TPs. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Not panned out. And now this life dealer is in this weird position. Middle tower 
is under our, attack. Oh, uh, the life stealer core against two control here. Moon comes over. He reveals that monkey says uh, flying. He's gonna get silenced up for now. So there's no finger of death. The ice path well off target against the monkey. Dyer's but the sentry force is down. Moon is gonna just time walk himself out of this one. While no tell dragging back on Jay on the macro pies in a nice position. But really, it's not doing anywhere enough damage. The bugs were all over Archon. They're just trying to escape out Dyer's of this. Moon stunned up and controlled by Fly with the extra fissure control. They are trying to slowly bring down this enchantress. Obviously, she is the untouchable, but uh, right now she is completely touched out in the, in the uh, jungle. So four heroes down for Team Archon. Nice is the last one to survive. He's still a long way off completing up this Aghanim Scepter. And, and they, Archon was struggling to win. Then you add in the by far highest net worth here in the game. He's already at 10k net worth. The next highest is 6k on the side of Archon. This, uh, the fight was just never going to go oh. well. Five feet unwillingly coming into that with a four star. They're going to turn around this fight and still got the Scarab Beetles on him. The negative armor is a, it's a big problem, but J.O. just chasing down Fly under the cover of the Rage. He's able to get the kill, but OG still have taken that melee rags on the top before the 20 minute mark. And it doesn't look like there's an easy way for Archon to try and get Oh, they just saw Moo. Moo should get out of there. The Batrider still has Lasso. Moon's gonna find a kill on Whitebeard if he's well, if he's lucky. Yeah, he turns for the Beatles. Uh, this nice talker should be dead. Moon's still got time left as well as 17 one charges available. So the TP in from Fluff for stuff actually doesn't help at all. In fact, now Fluff's got the Scarab Beetle on the back of him. Turns the Blade Mail on, so Moon was actually killing himself at that point. He's forced after wait by No Tell out to safety. And No Tell also pulling himself out for crit! Okay, that one's gonna work, and again, he does the same combo! <laughs> Just a flick into an Echo Slam, finds the kill and tries to get away scot free, but uh, they do take his life. There's no way these guys can kill us. <laughs> does, does that actually make the Echo Slam even more next level? Because that Echo Slam and death, even though we didn't find a kill, he stopped Roshan from happening down J.O. Gonna get dragged back out, the finger of death, the follow up hex, Fly still holding onto the stun, and with the extra fissure, they have more than enough damage to kill off J.O. Bluff and stuff. That's a bit of an obvious ward being placed down that he tries to, well, blade melt kill off OG. With the Wrath of Major kicking in, he almost killed off No Tell. The attack from the tower was kicking over, but No Tell survives at 45 HP. Oh, Miracle's getting really low. Over oh, the flame break kicking in. Moo's already dead. Like he's got sprites, but they're not going to do enough heal. Fly, actually, oh, okay. With a liquid fire attack, if the tree's going to attack him once more, he should die from this. Uh, okay, he went down to 6 HP. With a stun, he'll get rid of that creep, and another 4 hero is dead for Archon. Back. Like, this is a very like similar situation to a play. You're just missing the enigma in this game. Uh, and Crit is in a perfect position of the tree. I OG seem to have read this perfectly, so no one's defending the top lane. No one's defending the bottom. They ice pass into the tree line, just try and find him a crit with a double fissure. Obviously the raged up life still not affected by this, but Moon's in the middle of the fight, again getting multiple heroes with his Scarab Beetles. Prophets of Flops just trying to TP out, ends up being cancelled out by the Savage Raw, and that's just going to be two heroes down. This may be the game with Crit jumping in with a follow-up fissure. It's a double kill for Miracle. Moon's down and good game well played. Under 25 minutes Archon. They will lose game one against OG. They went for the play, they went for some kind of push trap, but uh, at the end of the day, it failed the timing. They couldn't get rush out, they couldn't keep the pressure up. Really excited to see it, just OG had such good lanes.